Doctor Who Series 8 Episode 9 Flatline. I'm Tortured Boy and if you don't know that then you're lost. This is my review for that lovely episode which saw these incredible creatures from a two-dimensional universe while the Doctor was um, attacking the Earth while the Doctor was trapped in a TARDIS that continued to shrink. How do people think of writing this stuff? First of all, we'll, uh, we'll go to Clara. Because, really, if anyone's ever been complaining that this is a this series is turning into Clara Who, then this is the greatest example. But what a phenomenal episode, and I think it's great that we've had so much character build-up for Clara in that we've seen her progress and progress and progress up to the point where she actually becomes the Doctor for one episode. Um, we'll come to the Doctor in a bit because I, the speech at the end just blew me away, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Clara's character progression, not a particularly good one in the sense of the character's morality um, how she started lying to both the Doctor and Danny one key thing I noticed um, when I was watching it was it's a very off the cut moment but it's when Danny rings at the very end of the episode and she flicks the phone up and she's got all this list of excuses and that's bad enough and then she clicks one and then the Doctor goes talk to Soldier Boy yeah, that's my attempt at a Scottish accent, you'll get past it. Um, talk to Soldier Boy. Stop saying it, Alex! Um, anyway, so he says that, and she goes, it wasn't Soldier Boy. And I'm thinking, right, so she's not just lying to Danny. She's still lying to the Doctor, even though he's caught her out. Lying about the fact that he thinks Danny, she, that Danny said that she's alright to travel on the TARDIS. So Clara's starting to become a very messed up character. And it doesn't seem, not messed up in a bad way. The more messed up, the better drama it is, and the more entertaining we find it. It's just not great for the character. But, th I don't care. <laughs> um, the more they suffer, the more I enjoy. Moving on. Um, Missy. Missy, Missy, Missy. Um, what did she mean by... My Clara? How how weird is that? Um, it seemed to be a very possessive sort of kind of thing. As if maybe it's the fact that she, if she is the woman in the shop has has been assumed um, that she thinks that all of this means that Clara is hers now, or maybe it's just like she called the doctor her boyfriend. Maybe she's very possessive. Um, maybe she's the Rani. I I know that doesn't really tie in with anything I've just said, but I just like that idea and I really hope it's true. Come on, Moffat! Or a female master. I'm feeling that would throw the fandom into total shock. I feel that um, the Doctor's characterization. what a brilliant episode to see the Doctor finally... It sort of You sort of realise that he's starting to see himself in Clara and he doesn't like what he sees, so maybe we'll start to see the Doctor change as Clara's changing to be more and more like the Doctor, maybe the Doctor will become more and more like Clara in the sense of he'll be kinder and he'll, he'll try to save more and he'll, he'll become a bit warmer because I know I know a lot of the audience love the Doctor and I've got to admit he's fast becoming my favourite Doctor but I imagine there are a few people out there who are still struggling with this harder, more um, cold Doctor. So the plot, what a brilliant plot, 2D monsters from a different dimension trying to get their way into a 3D universe. Wow! How incredible, adding a shrink in TARDIS and I, I have to give the segment to this speech alone. The final speech where the TARDIS lands it's like POW! and everything just sort of goes to shit and, and the monsters are like we've done it now and the Doctor's like, I'm the man who stops some monsters, and, and, and we're all sat there going, yeah you are, kick their ass! Um, brilliant episode, really love the ending scene, I feel that'll be like his Doctor speech, because um, every Doctor has a Doctor speech. Um, David Tennant was Voyage of the Damned, Matt Smith was, um, well Matt Smith had Lois, but I'll just say The Rings of Ackerton, um, Christopher Eccleston, Parting of the Ways, the whole no thing, love that. Um, but this has got to be um, one of hopefully many of Peter Capaldi's great speeches. Um, so yes, I will end it there. Next time is my most anticipated episode ever. I am so looking forward to it. Partly because when we were in school, um, we read the poem In the Forest of the Night. It goes something like, In the Forest of the Night, Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. And obviously there's a tiger in it. Very exciting. It looked a little bit like um, Little Red Riding Hood with the wolf and the little girl in the red coat. Um, but yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Really enjoyable episode, really enjoyed everything that sort of happened in it, and 
yeah, so we will see you next week for In the Forest of the Night, which promises to be exceptional, hopefully. Um, the series is shaping up to be fantastic. Um, in the comments I've put, well not in the comments, in the description, I've put my listings out of 10 for each episode. I'm giving this episode a 7.9 out of 10. Um, please note I am a harsh marker. I've only ever given one 10 out of 10 and that's for The Doctor's Wife, which is my ultimate heartbreaking fairy tale story which I just loved a bit. Um, so I will see you all on Saturday for In the Forest of the Night. Have a great week guys and bye!